This is the Dan Levator Show with the Stugats Podcast. I don't listen to athletics. I'm sure the athletics, the assholes, or whatever they call themselves, <laughs> probably had us not be in Milwaukee either in the first round. Celtics in three. Let me tell you Let me something. Tell Let me tell you something. We are careening towards Celtics heat, and I am going to be terrified. I don't listen to athletics. Oh, the hub. Celtics in three. Let me tell you Let something. Me Let me tell you something. It's not just that they win these games. It's how they win them is so irritating. Athletics, uh, assholes, or whatever they call themselves. <laughs> Celtics in three. I just cranked the hub. I don't listen to athletics. A smile from ear to ear. And then after I'm done with the hub, I can finally go to sleep. Let me tell you something. I don't listen to athletics. They're going to miss Tyler Hero at some point, right? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. I mean, at some point, somebody's going to make them miss Tyler Hero and they're not going to be able to put up 120. When it's supposed to be playoff defense, uh, we will get to all heat things in a second. Amino Hassan is in. Uh, but first and foremost, because we've got genuine calamity happening around here from every orifice of the company. All of you complaining, okay, of the rattling sound while we're talking, they are absolutely jackhammering in the garage all show long. We moved to a new place to avoid this. The other place was haunted. I am sorry the rattling is not an air conditioner. I am sorry uh, this is our fault as a company because we don't think about very simple things. They're jackhammering outside, and my apologies for uh, bothering your head. The other thing I need to get to before we get to the most improbable basketball run I've ever seen in this town uh, because I don't want Atlantic. I, Florida Atlantic and UM were one thing. What's <laughs> happening right now with, with an eight seed, uh, an eight seed has never looked like this. Never. It's not, hey, look, my fan base of my eight seed. Uh, no, I mean, the reason I say never, even though the Knicks went to the finals, is because the Heat have not trailed in a series. Heat fans haven't been scared at any point. Boston fans are already scared in this series. I, Heat fans have gotten the blessed Blessed gift of the next two days. No one can say shit to me. <laughs> I I don't even care if we win the next one. That's what that's how Heat fans are 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 thinking as Mike Schur and Bill Simmons run into the Hollywood Hills, like terrified <laughs> and screaming, uh, Those because elites. because Boston fans jam. are scared. But before we get to that, because I want to get to Celtics Heat, Jessica just looked pleadingly. At a camera and lights around the jackhammering, and I heard her through a soundproof glass say, I legitimately look like a corpse. And then she said, and Jeremy too. And Tony. I look whiter than a sheet of Xerox paper. Meanwhile, on the other side of the equation here. <laughs> in the shadows. I'm in the shadows. <laughs> okay, our lighting. Video, need you to keep up. Things are getting big and strong and fast around here, and Chris Cody's in charge today. Oh, no. He's ill-equipped. Yeah. I look fantastic. Exactly. Woo. I look phenomenal. Yeah, we look great. Yeah, okay. congratulations. I look like yeah. a loser, but I look yeah. phenomenal. <laughs> yeah, well, Juju. What a night last night was. <laughs> Juju, oh. uh, your, your Celtics fandom, I mean, I can't even imagine. Uh, I mean, please help me with the understanding of this. How a Celtics fan is supposed to feel about Jason Tatum. You're going to take no shots in the Hold fourth on. quarter. Before we get to Jason Tatum, I just want to point out, we give Jess a lot of grief for having 8 million teams. But this joker right here, Juju, wh wh how? Dude, this dude roots for the Eagles. He roots for the, the Celtics. The Hawks. He, the the Hawks. Bills fan. Bills fan, look, I believe. Okay, look. Number one, it's well known. I'm a, like Michael Ryan. I'm a fan of the logo. You feel me? I'm a fan of the shield. And I have a lot of betting interests. Wow. And I work out with a lot of different athletes. But on record, wow. these are my teams. For the for the final right. time. Okay. First time and final time or the first time and final time. 
the Buffalo Bills, because Leo this McKelvin was my best friend in the world at one point, and then he wasn't, and then well, he got rich and well, famous. Well, if, if I may stop you for a second, <laughs> uh, if I got, I got to stop you for just a second here, Juju, because Micah Parsons is getting uh, dragged for wearing whatever team's jersey he wants to wear on that perfectly sculpted body of his. He's the new Drake. Uh, you guys make fun of this, but I think I, I, I ride with Jessica and Juju on the fact of, no, I've got some sort of connection uh, to this team, therefore I will root let, for it. Let, let me hear the rest of this list. <laughs> the, Buffalo, <laughs> the Buffalo Bears, nobody circles the wagons like them. Uh, fly Eagles Fly, Leotis McKelvin play for those guys too. Those are my football teams, you feel me? Bills, Eagles. Lock it up. AFC, NFC. No Dolphins. You feel me? You, and then, you will not be jumping off the Dolphins bandwagon this season, Juju, right? I could see you doing a tour jersey. Look, like I have that. no problem with Miami brothers like having a good season as well, you feel me? But until the playoffs, well, but I, it's I, I, them. But I would say, Juju, in order for you to become a Dolphin fan, the people in this room, you have to have some connection to them like you do to a childhood friend who's playing for one of these teams. Mike's okay, it's family. funny you say that. Tyreek Hill is actually my cousin. He grew up in Pearson, Georgia. That's 15 miles away from me. This is my actual blood cousin. So I could do that, but I'm not even going to fake and flog it. Look at me, look. Ah. I'm sorry, Juju. You're going to have to leave for a couple it's, of minutes. Uh, what? You have to leave? No, 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 no. Because no, I need I to hear, hear the, the list, rest too. Of the list. We, we will get to the no, rest I'm of the list. Yeah, any, hockey we will, any hockey teams? Any uh, hockey teams? We will get to Juju's teams in a moment. I'm not going to veer too far from the one that Miami wishes to talk about today. I hit the, the right Panthers? button. Can we celebrate that? Uh, I hit the well, right let's, button. let's talk for a second about what's happening with Chris Woo! Cody. Yeah, thank, Woo! You, Chris. thank you. Thursday, Chris. Okay, Chris, uh, you're going to have to get the jackhammering stopped. Uh, you're going to have to get makeup for everybody who looks like a corpse. You're going so to have shiny. to fix the lighting. Yes, Amin is saying I'm too shiny today. You are running a big DraftKings network now with Mike out. He's careening and uh, descending straight into insanity. He will be in an asylum soon because of what happens in your headset every show now that there's a video team. And the video team can be a it can be like scrambling and trying to herd some cats over there. They're in my ear also right now saying video team, not the lighting team. They don't want to be associated. Okay. With the different teams, different <laughs> right. teams. Dan. Yeah, well, people don't understand how content, how expensive it is to make as we buy plants and lunch for everybody. Yeah. But yes, we're going to need a lighting team here yeah. because we can't Aleem. we can't have shadows and ghouls. <laughs> In what used to be the shipping container Shadows that is now Mission ghouls. Control, right? Because you want a better title than shipping container because you're moving on up. Shadows and Ghouls is pretty good. I like that. <laughs> also, where's Stu Gatz? Uh, uh, this is a problem. It's a recurring problem. It's an endless problem. That's also on your job list. Find him so we can talk about these things. So that we can talk about, for example, that Jimmy Butler, this is a true stat, not making it up. Since 2000, since 2000, Jimmy Butler has more playoff wins than the Knicks. Losers. He's Dude. got he's got a lot more playoff wins than the Knicks. That's not even like that's not even that's not even a surprising stat, Dan. You know, I like, agree. <laughs> Get over it. <laughs> the Knicks were last round. You guys act like you've been there before. The, the the best stat you had last week was that Spo has been to more conference finals than the Knicks have had winning seasons in the last like 15, 16 years. Man, I don't know. You can handpick your stat really. Sure. I mean, the Knicks are an ever, That's what I mean. There's a never lot. ending fountain. Well, let's talk, I mean, about the game last night, sure. okay? Because And let's talk about Spo, because the sure. stat shouldn't escape you when, because it made me double take, and it shouldn't. I've been watching it. It said 15 years has made the conference final seven times. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, well, half the time he's there. While Monty Williams and Doc Rivers and Budenholzer, I saw a coach a team coach of the year. He's mm. won. Budenholzer won a coach of the year, unlike Spo. He's got 60 plus wins on an Atlanta team that I thought was going to win and that fell apart because Budenholzer is Budenholzer. And he can get you there. But does, you know, Giannis is now, I mean, this is not an interesting. Mm. Last night, this is what they, the Heat have already done to Giannis. He's on Instagram laughing. About when someone asks him, hey, would you like to be with the Warriors? Sounds pretty good to Giannis all of a sudden. that yeah. He did that to him. Yeah. He, he, he has one toenail of Kevin Durant from Giannis being someone we'd be laughing at like Embiid for four or five years now. Because he can't get it done. And in that game last night, and I'm like, oh, shit, we're starting here? Game one, we're starting here? With, hey, rookie coach, Missoula. That's the biggest quarter a Heat playoff team has ever had. Not a timeout? You don't have a timeout for that. Now, I mean, we don't know what makes Spo 
that great. What I do know, and this one's rare for me, is, hey, Spo says it's good. All right. I'm not going to question it. His process is probably you come such a far, a far way. But then. I think fans, He's... I think fans haven't though. Like, and I'm not sure. I'm not positive. I think if they lose a game, they'll blame Spo for something. But I'm just saying, holy shit, the Heat's process on whatever leadership is, it's it's a pretty good governor. And now in game one, the Boston coach gets to shake under like, oh, this isn't going to feel good. That you're not going to have any coaching advantages here. Right. So there's a couple of things. Number one. Spoh's excellent because he's incre incredibly well-prepared, but also he's good at on-the-fly adjustments, right? Because there are two types of adjustments. People talk about, oh, you make adjustments, right? There are adjustments from game to game, meaning we played this game. Whether we won or lost, some things worked, some things didn't work, and we're trying to anticipate what the other team's going to do, and so we start making adjustments in between games. But then the other type is a micro-adjustment, is within the game itself. How do, we, how do we get to a place of more uh, effectiveness? Because this ain't working. Understanding and recognizing it's not working and doing something different. That's where Spo really flourishes, right? But the other part, Dan, is the idea that Spo gets to coach unapologetically. I saw Monty Williams go from winning a bunch of games and having gone to the finals and even this year trusting his entire roster to a sale happening of the team and then an insecurity of, oh, shit, man, I, I got I to gotta save my job. Eight-man rotation. Lack of trust. Lack Ma of adjustment. Playing Ma my guys 40 minutes. Monty know? Williams, the original look at me, Louie, correct? Uh, the, yes. the, the very he, original, the origin story. The, the coining of the term, yes. Monty Williams. Look at me, Louis. Monty Williams, who has the Doc Rivers charm. Everybody likes him. Everyone universally mm -hmm. thinks he's very good at his job. Mm -hmm. Opponents respect him, everything else. Uh, but he's got to win with those players. Lost Aiton, clearly, at the end. Maybe the franchise it's will lose. In the beginning. May, may lose Aiton altogether. And Jimmy Butler and Eric Spolstra are face-to-face -face yelling at each other because the culture of the Heat is something different than that. And what's amazing about Spo and Jimmy Butler is they both just talk about this level of trust they have from the organization. And with Spo, it's been an evolution, right? When he first started coaching with the Heat, the criticism of him was he couldn't make the in-game adjustment. Mm -hmm. He was great from game to game. And now, I mean, you're watching the Heat go out and score the most points they've ever scored in a quarter in the third quarter of this game against such a talented team. Why are we crushing the Celtics here? They they won three quarters last night. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand. Did you, you, guys... ca did you catch Missoula throwing his clipboard, trying to be like Spo? Like ah! big third quarter adjustment by him. There was so that, I have this right though statistically that in that historic fourth in that historic quarter for the Heat, unlike any in playoff history, he had more thrown clipboards than timeouts used. <laughs> That's correct. In a moment of sincere honesty, I will tell you that this Heat and Panther run, I've been making fun of Greg Cody because he's an old man and running to these things and emotionally investing in them at his age when it gets in the way of his beer drinking uh, will ruin a man for a month or two months because he's a dinosaur trying to write about games on deadline and there's one every night. On top of that, I got jackhammering in my head and yours, and I'm trying to uh, do the things that we do around here so that we can have a company that exists with plants and masseuses and lunch and lighting teams and video teams. Chris Cody is under it today. I right now am I'm over it. I am, well, Chris, I just I need to get this part personal part out because I'm I'm sure I'm positive that the audience has felt from me for two years. Jesus Christ, Dan is crazed. And yes, it's not, not just the audience. Yeah, man. every yes, no, everybody, everybody. Was he not like this before? <laughs> he's a very let's, easygoing guy. Let's talk about him like he's not here. Yeah, how's Dude, this going? You guys remember, uh, like, listen? Have you ever gone back and listened to old episodes? First of all, Dan sounds so carefree. Oh, Stu Gott sounds like a different well, person. That's, that's, we'll talk about him yeah, later. Yeah, yeah that's that's before the heaters. Did yeah. you guys ever notice he wears collar shirts with cap, caps, like ball caps? Like, what is that? Wow. He wear a new era hat with a collar shirt. Where you going? The beach? With shorts on. With shorts oh, yeah, on. Right. Dude, Shin's always moisturized, Let though. me tell you something. He's worn more pants in the last, like, month. Than I've ever it's seen weird. Dan it gets to a pants. weird point at this point. I'm like, yeah. hey, Dan, mix in some shorts. Please. Is everything okay? I, I wonder that sometimes. Like, these are the signs of a breakdown, right? Like, he starts wearing pants all pants. the time. 
Yeah. Big sign of a break. Her glasses was foggy as hell during that one interview last week. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when you were talking to uh, what movie star y'all was talking to? Them glasses was yeah. foggy, <laughs> sir. I think it's because he's overweight. Oh, oh no. no. That was oh, a too far. Far. I mean, come on. What are you Dude, doing there? The matter with you. What are you Grace. doing there? Ridiculous. He's right there. Pot yeah, the kettle come on, man. man. Even like his interviews back in the day, he sound so happy. He'd be like happy and go, you know, carefree, go lucky. And then now it's kind of like there's an element of tension and grief just lathered on top of all of it. I can feel it in my plums. <laughs> well, it is the digital media age. Yeah. He didn't even ask UD about John ja Morant. I mean, what are we doing? Yeah. What happened there? Freedom has been something of a prison. And I need to moisturize because my liver's going. Oh, my God. Is that How's the infrastructure going? You've I'm said sorry. that a lot. Okay, uh, look, and I, all I can do is apologize to everybody. <laughs> Just a sincere apology. Yes, I have been a total lunatic for two years for reasons that are here. And then I, at some point soon, I'm going to tell you about the stuff happening with my family. I'm going to protect some privacies at the moment. But it's just kind of been crazed. And there's a jackhammering in my head whether they're doing construction or not for two years. And I believe that I have been very close to certifiably crazy for two years. And I can't have also the Heat and the Panthers be crazy at the same time. What a time. It's too much. I'm going to have a breakdown. I, I did this last night. I kind of just assessed. After the Heat won, I just had a moment. I was like, I need to sit in this moment. Mm. We're in the Eastern Conference Finals, up one nothing. Panthers start tomorrow. I just want to live in this moment. I want to slow time down because we're moving quick. This is going to um, all be over soon, folks. Now, now, start tonight. Chris, Tony, uh, Roy. I guess, Jeremy, you're kind of a Miami guy, right? No, he's not. No? Kind of? I mean, okay. He's maybe. a Fort Lauderdale guy. It's okay. Okay, all right. So for for the Miami guys, like how? Me. No, you're not a Miami guy. Neither, neither well, Juju, hell no, you ain't no Miami guy. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. I grew up in Miami. What are we talking about? I, I, I'm trying to figure out, with all the things that have happened this year, does one championship from either the Panthers or the Heat equate this to the greatest year in South Florida sports? I mean, this is already a top five run for this city. Oh, and the Marlins swept the Cubs a couple weeks ago. Oh, yeah, oh, that's right. That yeah, yeah. Marlins are 1,400. Oh, They're 14-1 and one in run-run games. Keeping an eye. The most important thing going on is Idris Adebayo is at the house right Ooh. now. Yeah. Idris is at the I, house. I don't know who that Bam is. Bam took his Damn, ass to Boston. Damn, I know that guy. You feel I know me? that guy. Bam is in Boston right now, well, sir. Uh, okay, I mean, I am grateful for your expertise. You see things that we don't see uh, all around. And that Heat game, like, we're, n never mind where it is in, in history, the fact that it's the greatest thing, it's mm -hmm. the eight seeds, it's the surprise, it's okay, continue to keep doubting us, and it being a real thing. It's not like that. Who's talking in my ear right now? Us against the world is a real thing mm -hmm. that the Miami Heat are feeling. They're doing all the culture bull that mm -hmm. makes everyone crazy. But also, I mean, and I don't know what this is worth, when you go to the statistics that are hustle points, mm. hustle points, the ridiculous ones, they are first in deflections in the playoffs. They are first in loose balls. They're first in charges. They're, they're first in screen assists. Uh -huh. What's all of that worth? One nothing in the Eastern Conference Finals. That's what it's worth. It's, it's being here and being up in the series. And, you know... Spo talked about it last night, and Jimmy talked about it last night, all in the in the post game about like they they do things a certain way there, and you know they're reaping the benefits of it. Um, I don't want to go too far away from what Juju brought up, which is Bam brought it last night. Like he attacked, uh, he was the aggressor, and this is this is where all the frustration came over the last two years. It's like from you more than most, yeah, especially last year. And I, I was just like, hey, man, like, why aren't you like this? And I'm not talking about the productivity. Like, the points, the assists, the rebounds, they come and they go. But the aggression is the part that we're looking for. And last night he was aggressive. Well, he took but, it to them. But explain this part to me, right? Mm -hmm. Because Julius Randle just had a body language meltdown. 
Mm-hmm. All every, it's trade him. It's the Knicks have fallen apart. That can't be your key piece. We all don't trust him. Boo. We don't trust your body language. You've been saying for two or three years, this dude is a physical menace when he chooses mm-hmm. to go neck first at the rim offensively without fear, which is easier to do against some than others. They had like a net rating of 145 when Robert Williams was on the court yesterday. If you're going to tell me that Bam is going to make Robert Williams not matter in this series and the Celtics are going to go from a number two defense in the postseason to a number 20 defense in the postseason because Bam knows he can do that all series? It's a a game changer. Last year, he was intimidated by Robert Williams or felt like it. It felt like it on the floor, like he didn't have – the confidence going against Robert Williams' physicality. And last night, he took it to him. He, he, well, not in the first half. Well, first half, Williams was eating. Well, you say well, that. Offensively. But, but but like, no, but, the, no, but help me understand this part. I mean, because uh-huh. this is uh, – so the first half could have looked like a disaster. It is – we do this so poorly on the defensive end. I mean, I think it kind of matters that the Celtics have gone from 2 to 20 on what they do defensively because it makes them more susceptible and, and shakier – than you think they are because they're not they're not playing championship defense if Robert Williams isn't some semblance of himself. And what you saw last night in the first half, weirdly, I mean, is more first half paint points than you ever see in a playoff game against the Miami Heat. Right. Because it was just throw it up there. And we well, will allow this game to be Marcus Smart and Robert Williams. We believe we will run this off the court eventually. If you guys want to play this, Marcus Smart through Robert Williams. Let's see what Tatum does when the ball hasn't been running through him in the fourth quarter. And the answer is zero shots. Well, what happened in the first half was the the Heat did not get a lot of stops on – Straight line drive. So basically, uh, Bill Cartwright used to track this all, or make me track this all the time. The, the paint touches. How many times does a ball enter the paint? Doesn't matter if it ends up getting kicked out and getting a, a three point shot. How many times is it touching the paint? And the Celtics got in the paint as many times as they wanted. The other thing was the Heat were turning the ball over a lot, and that ended up opening up the floor and opening up these opportunities for Boston. When did Marcus Smart become Magic Johnson? Dude, that was crazy, dude. I mean, just no-look passes. Dude, that was crazy. Like, there was a point where I was like, all right, what's happened here? It feels like, like it felt like someone put in a cheat code. The one pass that it was an alley-oop to a Time Lord, that it was almost went into the basket. That was one of the best passes I've ever seen. Offensive goaltending. That was, <laughs> of course. All right. Jeremy is an unpleasant homer. He is taking that role from Mike today. Many of you must be relieved so far that Mike Ryan isn't here to spoil this with his seesawing arrogance. And he doesn't trust this team. And we'll get to the sound at some point in the show of of Jimmy Butler saying he doesn't care if you trust his team or not. But uh, these these numbers I'm about to give you, I mean, I think are interesting, even though it's a one-game sample. And Let me tell you something. I would say that... A one-game sample, I would expect the Celtics to win the next game by 20. But I'm going to make the argument as to why it is that the Celtics should be scared by what just happened in their building. Because an eight seed is not supposed to be. Boston and Milwaukee have been the best teams in this sport for the last two years. And I believe better than the Miami Heat. And there haven't been many, but better over here in this conference. And they've been playing each other. And Boston, we've seen Bam at the rim, Tatum no in the bubble. Then Boston comes back and weirdly, in Miami, wins a game seven when all of us last year were surprised. Oh, Jimmy's taking that shot. And, whoa, it's kind of surprising Miami's that close. It seems like Boston has gotten better than Miami because they play playoff defense with a coach who's about to have a scandal that's going to make him gone and they're going to replace him with a 34-year-old. The Miami Heat in that game last night won on the road, even though 12 turnovers in the first half is a disaster. It's not how they play basketball. You do that on the road, you're going to – you should be hurting. 40 first-half pain points is something that can get a crowd into a game and make it look like what they're doing offensively is uh, easier than it actually was getting a double-digit halftime lead. The Heat in crunch time on the road – I mean, going three and a half minutes without a basket yeah. on the road and the Celtics don't get in the game because they're still – where's Tatum? Where, where's Tatum? Why does Tatum not have the ball? The announcers are screaming it. Where's Tatum? 
That was, I mean, look, it was surprising. And the worst part was when he got it, it was kind of, they were better off when they were asking where stayed him. Three turnovers. Three three embarrassing turnovers. The only person doing more traveling than Stu Yachts, Jason Tatum. <laughs> and why is Peyton Pritchard getting so many minutes oh, against man. Jimmy Ah, the Butler. Pritchard minutes. Like, come on, Joe. We my, need you, Joe. My favorite no. text from last night, we'll get to it in a second, is Chris Cody texting me. Ah, the Zeller minutes. There is so much heat stuff we're going to annoy you with today, local hour and all the other parts of the show. But Missoula, 34-year-old coach right now in the center of the cauldron. Missoula, I mean, the report coming out yesterday, and I can stop on a movie. Casino will stop me every time. Somehow Die Hard will stop me every time. The Italian job, I don't know why. Anything with Liam Neeson. No. But Missoula saying that he watches the town four times a week was so telling to me in so many different ways about how badly Boston he wishes to be and will never be if he loses this yeah. series. I can relate to Missoula. Young guy in over his head, you know, <laughs> pushing buttons here that he doesn't really know, just hoping the, the right button. I also watched that movie last night, The Town. Uh, is that what uh, – Ben, Affleck, ben Affleck and, yeah. and it was a good Blake movie. Lively. It's good like flick. the heist one with oh. the banks. It's a, right? it's a good movie. It's a good Come one. on, what are we doing here? It's is a good it, movie. Is it yeah. worth it's watching? A very good movie. Do you need to watch it more than one time in your no. life, though? No, you do. You I definitely don't think do. So. More once, than one time? Once a year at this least. This isn't the Lord of the Rings extended edition. Right? I would never watch One watch actually. and you're good. Yeah, it's not Rogue One either. Uh, no, I, I, That's super pandering, right? Like, this isn't just regular pandering. Like, he said, what's the most Boston thing I could do? And he said, I drink a Sam Adams every day. Wait, no, can't do that. They're I get some chowder sponsor. on the way home. Chowder. Dunkin' like chow Donuts. It's like Dunkin'. They call, they call it Dunkin'. They don't say Dunkin' oh, Donuts. Oh, my bad. You got your donkeys or whatever they call it up there? No, 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 no. That doesn't work. Oh, I get it. This will be subtle. I watch the town. Four times a week? Every week? Wicked good movie. Well done. But the, <laughs> my favorite part about this whole Joe Mazzula experience isn't, watching the town four times a week. It isn't throwing the clipboard ineffectually in the third quarter. It isn't not calling a timeout as the Heat are going on this monster run. Those three details, by the way, is how someone who was posing as a coach would do it. Like someone who didn't know how to be a coach in a movie. I'll throw my clipboard, I'll forget to call my timeouts, and I'll tell them I watch the town four times a week. It, you know what's funny is it's his whole demeanor in the press conference is so combative. Right? Like, so they asked him, why did you call a timeout? Right? When, when you do this, and he's like, I called two timeouts in the first quarter. Like, that was, his, that was his big comeback. And going up against Spolstra, who's constantly making adjustments on the fly, willing to kind of call timeouts and change things up so quickly, how did you balance, like, trying to let things play out in ways you usually do versus, like, having to seize control? I called two in the first quarter. Thinking more like the third quarter. No, I don't call two in the first quarter. Save it for the third quarter run. By the way, he also, he, he also called huh? a timeout in the fourth quarter with 3.21 to go. When they asked him about that, he said, because it was a use it or lose it. It's like, well, okay, so you should have used that one in the third quarter then, and then you wouldn't have to worry about use it or lose it. But that's not the kicker. That's not the most defensive he got all night long. Barry Jackson sent a tweet. Oh, it was Barry great. Jackson. When B Jax is dunking on you, you know you're wait, wrong. Wait, explain to Jessica. Wait a minute. We need to explain to Jessica. Uh, Barry, this is a guy that hates kids, right? Barry he hates ja kids night at the Heat game? Probably. Uh, Barry Jackson is also Roy. You could speak as a local Panther legend. Barry Jackson is also a local media legend, but he doesn't go after people a whole still, lot. He's still using notepads. That's what we are. Right but now. he goes after kids at the Heat game, he's so old school, kindred wait, spirit. He's the nicest guy in the world, right? Docile. Uh, Dossal sounds, I don't know, that, that's a little well, harsh. Well, just harmless. Harmless. Dossal, that sounds a little that's harsh. That's pretty harsh, too. Yeah. Sweet? Uh, but, you know, yeah, yeah, I like sweet. that. Sweet? I think nice works. Let, let, Let's just stick with he's nice. Not, yeah, he's not like a rabble rouser of a columnist. He's no Greg Cody. He's a journalist. He's, he's a journalist. And a great reporter. A first he's me. round. He's a first-round draft pick, him or Andy Slater, if locally you needed somebody who who is plugged into news and information in our community in the sports world. Nobody covers this market and all its teams the way that old school journalist Barry Jackson does. And does it fairly, I would say, right? Like with, without in the old school way of you don't know any of my allegiances when I write, right? He tweeted this. Joe Mazzula notes Celtics won three of four quarters. You can't make this stuff up. You said they played harder than you in the third quarter. 
that's what they do. They play harder than their opponent. How are you guys unprepared for that? And we, we were prepared. We played harder than them in the first half, and then they outplayed us for one quarter. So we were prepared for it. We had the right mindset heading into the game. Um, you know, Malcolm mentioning that. Did anything kind of, you think, spill over from a um, We won three out of the four quarters. We lost one quarter because we, lost, we dropped our sense of urgency. So, no. So, he's not wrong, well, but it's not just not what that. you say. Hold on. So, ba Barry tweeted that, and he I was like, wrong. and then I heard <laughs> that sound. Oh, I heard that sound, and I said, well, okay, well, he said it the one time. Then I watched the full press conference. The dude kept coming back to the point over and over again. Juju. Is this your king? Is this your leader? Unfortunately so, man. I'm so embarrassed. Joe, you are embarrassing us. You are embarrassing yourself. Please stop this. Please stop being so combative. You you, you get more, uh, what they say, with honey yeah. with, than, than whatever Not from Barry Jackson. Say. Not from Barry Jackson. You don't. Holy moly, man. Stop it, brother. These are There were two local sports broadcasting legends, I mean, who made appearances last night. Because Ira Winderman also, like, just generally annoyed the Heat with how long-winded and gas-baggy his questions are. He's been annoying people that way for 40 years. And Bam just threw his papers up in the air because he was just tired of how long-winded the question is. But also another local legend. Wait a second. 40 years? The Heat have only been around 35. Now, this is actually better video, but you can hear here. You can hear here, You're here. Bam's You're here. frustration but hold with on. Ira. I, I want to explain to Amin, though. Yes, when I say 40 years, okay, I'm sorry, off by five. <laughs> Ira's been covering the team since the very beginning, since the first practice. Ira Winderman has been doing this to annoy Heat players across three and a half decades. Three straight series, three straight road wins at the start, three straight times of reclaiming home court advantage. Jesus, bro. Well, you do have home court advantage, I'm sorry. Um, just the way your team has come out of me, three straight opening statements. How about that? Um, I think we just go out there and we try to win basketball games. Um, at the end of the day, we are eight, the eighth seed, so we're on the road. So, so we got to go out there and try to win games on the road. And uh, we don't have the uh, the advantage of uh, having four games at home. So we got to go out there and try to you know win games on the road. We find ways to win. I just want to point out that for the entirety of Kyle Lowry's answer, Bam's hands are all over his face. That whole answer that you heard, the very professional answer from Kyle Lowry, Bam Adebayo sitting there at the podium, his hands on his face as he holds his head in disbelief that Ira would say this. What's the history here? Like, Jeremy, do you, like, is there something that Ira has, like, has there been? It's his history. It's 35 years of Ira's been asking. But it seems asked... like, no, no, no. The, you could tell in Bam's face, there, like, there must have been some article that he no. Jeremy, Bam more than somebody else. Jeremy, rank the Heat Beat reporters in terms of how much you like them, too. <laughs> no, Jeremy is just following this, like, closer than He's I am. So I'm just room, curious, yeah. is there something? A, a peek between... behind the curtain, I literally, right before this segment, turned to everybody in this room and said, hey, on, on the whole, like, putting media guys out there and on them. Maybe you let me sit this one out. I got to hang out with these guys a little bit. Jeremy, um, what do you think? Okay. Uh, let, let's I'm not, I'm just asking for facts. Like Chris, ha has he written an article before that was like that Bam came Chris out and Cody. held it up? Like there's some history here with Bam's face. I'm going to tell you what the history is. And Jeremy, you are right. Chris, I need you to be in charge of this. The lighting's bad. The plants are dying. Uh, Jessica looks like a the course. plants are dying. The plants are fake. The plants are great. What? The plant person will be here at noon. We're paying a, a plant person for fake plants? What are they doing? You didn't hear from me. Fencing it? Chris Cody, you have to protect Jeremy Tesche. Not What's his up? not his paycheck. Jeremy Tesche can look compromised. He knows the heat. He's actually an ascending broadcaster in a way that's super weird. Uh, <laughs> in that young people his age aren't allowed to do Marlins and Heat, but he's the only one of us who's actually doing media work. In the locker room. I covered Speaking the last yourself, game of the uh, Heat series. Yeah, I'm, last with the Remember? Panthers. Yeah. I spoke Panthers. into his shoe. And I covered the Marlins. I'm so. literally I, in the locker room. I was at the Spoles press conference that Greg Boy, Cody thought was tape. <laughs> Panthers pull Pabrowski. <laughs> that's cool. That's, that's true. I am 40. <laughs> and also true. Also true. Is All of the, us. <laughs> uh, not Panthers pull Bobrovsky is, is dramatic. That is a huge move. It's more like 
I think that was icing is a tweet from uh, from Roy as well. I saw something last night that I was I like, he's changed. <laughs> Roy has been affected. It was like something like Kyle Lowry. How about that? It was like something oh, Kyle Lowry how related. About that? Where I was like, wow, we're getting oh, a little boy. opinion from Roy here. Listen to me. Roy is a responsible, objective journalist doing his job meticulously. You right now, all of you are mocking Barry. He's wearing, he's a, wearing a Panthers jersey a that says Bellamy jersey. on it. But I'm the home. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not at the game. No, am I? See, that would be unprofessional. He's also in the locker room doing reporting. But uh, Chris Cody, again, as you manage the careers of people in in the executive producer position for the day, do not put Jeremy in a position where he has to mother bleep someone like Ira Winderman. Allow me to do it. Why are we mother bleeping Ira Winderman? Jeremy's got to think of the show here. How does that It's not about him. It was just a funny question and a funny reaction. Now we're mother bleeping people? Just do it and say it's a bit. That's what we all do, Jeremy. (laughs) Uh, this is what I will say, not unlike Barry Jackson. Ira Winderman has been doing a very good job on the Miami Heat beat for 35 years. And he asked long-winded questions. And Bam is a maximum professional who has grown tired and after the game wants to go home and doesn't want a 50-second question. So you hear all the ancillary sound of papers rustling and all that sound because he's frustrated with Ira Winderman. I'm not frustrated with you, Ira. I just want to I'll let that be known. I don't the views of the Dan Lebetard show. What are show. you doing, a meme? I look, man. I know these people. Y'all don't have to see them. I see them all the time. That's man. all Jeremy was trying to say, and then everybody's like, "Oh no, Jeremy, you got to talk about it, bro." Well, you do have home court advantage. I'm sorry. <laughs> There's a Jesus in there before that, bro. By the way, Getting home court advantage, Jesus, bro. There you, go. <laughs> you do have home court advantage. I'm sorry. Yeah, Paul, I didn't hear that the first time. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> he, he, he asked long way. Look, it's is this really is this really killing Ira Winderman to say Bam got frustrated by a long question. It was uh, a long night. Court and- advantage, <laughs> bro. Well, you do have home court advantage. I'm sorry. I'm punching at the table, man. <laughs> it's it's the slap of the table with the the box score under the court advantage, the paper. bro. <laughs> Boom. Miami's rubbing off on him. On who? The bro, the bro is a classic Miami term. When you say Jesus, then? I've got some other sound I want to get to because uh, there are professionals in our industry, and then there's Parakeet Cortez. He is not behaving like a journalist. Hey, what's up, fellas? I had to call in tonight specifically because I heard Joe Mazzola talking about winning three out of four quarters. My name is Joe, and I just feel ashamed to share a name with him after tonight. That guy is a bum. And, you know, I heard you guys talking about that other bum, Jimmy Butler, saying he's not a top 20 player. The thing about Jimmy Butler is... I'm a fireball. Let's go, Heat! Coward. (laughs) Show some respect to Jimmy Butler next time. (laughs) Oh, the hub. (laughs) He's a child. It's a grown man in a Heat jersey. He's a child. He's... (laughs) Calling boss. Something's wrong with him. <laughs> An actual maniac. He's not well. <laughs> Yo, you put on our video team. Someone needs to on the hub's uh, call screeners. The hell are they doing? Oh, that is, the that, hub. That Ryan Cortez is an adult journalist. <laughs> what are you doing? I just cranked the hub. <laughs>